researchers are taking a new approach to fighting arthritis. Here at Washington University School of Medicine, they are creating smart stem cells. From smartphones to smart cars, people rely on smart technology to do things for them or tell them where to go. Smart cars can sense an impending collision and automatically apply the brakes, keeping drivers and passengers from harm. Can cells in your body be programmed to act and react autonomously to serious situations keeping you safe? That's what Farshid Gilak hopes to achieve. He's the co-director of Washington University's Center of Regenerative Medicine. He's rewiring stem cells in a new approach that could one day be used to fight arthritis smart cells that deliver a biologic drug to fight inflammation. Stem cells have a mild but natural way of bringing inflammation down. What we wanted to do was really harness this in a more direct way and amplify it. So we wanted to make a smart stem cell that would know when and how to deliver these biologic drugs. We wanted to take a stem cell and totally rewire it, reprogram it, so that it could sense when it had inflammation around it, and in response to that, create that biologic drug that blocks the inflammation. Then when there's no more inflammation, it can stop making the drug. Gilak says it took several years, but finally they have succeeded in rewiring stem cells to be like a simple computer that has one job one decision. It's like a tiny iPhone <laughs> with one circuit in it so far. <laughs> they successfully modified stem cells of mice, vaccinating them with smart cells. The cells are truly smart as they are stem cells modified for autonomous regenerative therapy. So we can take an animal and inject these cells, basically vaccinate it, and give the animal a simulated TNF flare or a rheumatoid arthritis flare. And what we see is that the cells immediately light up, which shows that they're responding to the TNF by producing the gene of interest. So as rapidly as we've measured them, within 20 minutes of the flare, the cells respond and produce the biologic drug. Here's one interesting way Gilak describes it. Think of it as his lab is creating a clone army to attack. Magnificent. We have what are called a, uh, a clonal population. It's like a clone army of the same cell. So each one is pretty close to identical to the one next to it because they all came from one mother cell. So all these cells do pretty much the same thing when they are exposed to inflammation. So right now, they act mostly in unison. Exactly how they fight inflammation, Gilak explains. We've been looking at this one molecule that leads to some of the flares and pain in arthritis called tumor necrosis factor, TNF. Now when TNF binds to the cell surface, it causes an inflammatory response. And this can lead to pain and degeneration of the joints. What we wanted to do was develop a smart autonomous system where these cells, instead of having an inflammatory response, would create a biologic drug to block TNF activity and shut off that inflammation. So to do this, we took skin cells, converted them into stem cells, and with stem cells, we can grow cartilage or other tissues. He says the real trick is to edit the stem cells to make them smart using new gene editing technology. We edited the DNA of these stem cells to create a circuit. We used a very recently developed method called CRISPR-Cas9. And this method allows you to go into a very specific spot on the DNA of a cell, cut it, and insert another gene in. So uh, my graduate student, Jonathan Brunger, figured out where exactly we wanted to make this cut and insert the gene so that we could actually create a circuit inside the DNA of a stem cell so that whenever it saw inflammation, instead of going down its normal pathway, to cause inflammation, we hijack that pathway, and instead we put in a drug that blocks inflammation, and it's the inhibitor of TNF. Unlike traditional arthritis medication, he says the cells 
are smart enough to give just the right dose. It goes and blocks the TNF and shuts off inflammation. Once inflammation is shut off, the cell stops making the drug. Now that they've proven it works on mice, in the next few years it can lead to human studies in a couple of ways. The stem cells can go into the body like a vaccine, where cells are spread all over. But they don't do anything until they're activated by this inflammation. Or there's another approach. We can actually get those stem cells to grow a functional piece of cartilage that can fill a defect in the joint where the cartilage is worn down or broken off, or we can actually grow an entire joint surface. And they not only do they replace the cartilage, but anytime there's inflammation, they turn on and deliver drugs just to that joint when you need them to. And the lab is not stopping there. GILAC is looking ahead to the future. Students are already working on the next stage of this research, growing stem cells with more complex circuits. We have the technology and using a few different methods where we can layer these circuits onto each other and we can get multiple versions of this. So as we do this, the cell becomes more and more complex, having multiple circuits that can drive different decisions. Sometimes we may want things to turn on for a short time, turn off, have different dynamics and different responses to different chemicals. And we're building those into the next generation of these smart cells. Gilak says just getting to this point of having cells successfully make one good decision has been a journey. And he's proud of the lab's accomplishments. Start off as stem cells. They have to grow up. They have to learn what to do. And I, I think in a lot of ways they're like teenagers. They have to make decisions of what they're going to be later in life. And, and here we are just nudging it along so that it, it makes one good decision and can use that uh, decision to fight inflammation in arthritis. So at this point, it's a very simple self-driving car that could make one decision to either stop or go, basically. For Innovations, I'm Kathleen Berger.